Good morning and welcome to the Promised Land. This is the home for Leanne and myself out here in the woods. We're so blessed to be here today. She is doing the taping for me and I am bringing you what I hope will be a message from God to your heart. For those of you who were up here last year for the outdoor worship service, this is a familiar sight to you. And also for those of you who are on the Emmanuel mission team who have come up year after year to help us out here in the spring. We welcome you here this day and pray that it is a special time for you. The week that we have just completed included Earth Day on Wednesday. And I just wanted to remind you that it is never too late to plant a tree or to consider the things in your life that you could change to in some little way have less impact on the change in the earth. Uh, we want this to be a world that is safe and a peaceful, healthy environment for generations to come. I also would like to mention to you about next week's service. We'll also be here and we will be celebrating communion. It will be a virtual communion. We will not be together physically, but spiritually and in other ways we'll gather together. And so you have a little homework to prepare before next week's service. You will need to get a little plate and a little cup. Maybe you want to set a little worship service up as before you view. You could have um, a Bible, maybe a candle, and a small plate with just the amount of bread that you will consume. Perhaps a small cup with a little bit of juice or wine if you would prefer. And bread similar to what you would consume if you were at the altar at church. You do not need a whole loaf of bread, neither do you need a great big goblet of juice, but something small, something that you would consume in the time that we are together. I hope that you will consider that and prepare your heart for sharing in that holy meal next week. Would you listen now, please, as I share with you the call to worship? Welcome, saints of God, to this time of celebration. Come with clean hands and pure hearts to worship God. We come to this holy place seeking a blessing. We gather as apostles to renew our faith. Be still that the Holy Spirit may be known to us. Be open to the grace and peace of salvation. We affirm that God loves us and all people. We seek to live that love among all we meet. Please take this time of quiet and music to settle yourself and to listen for the call of the Spirit and invite him into your heart.
you please pray with me? Gracious God, your amazing love extends through all time and space to all parts of your creation, which you created and called good. You made a covenant with Noah and his family, putting a rainbow in the sky to symbolize your promise of love and blessing to every living creature and to all successive generations. You made a covenant with Abraham and Sarah, blessing them and their descendants throughout the generations. You made a covenant with Moses and the Israelite people to all generations, giving them the Ten Commandments and challenging them to choose life. In Jesus, you invite us to enter into a new covenant in communion with all who seek to be faithful to you. As people of faith, we are called into covenant. Your covenant of faithfulness and love extends to all of the creation. We pray for the healing of the earth, that present and future generations may enjoy the fruits of creation and continue to glorify and to praise you. In the name of Jesus, who taught us this prayer, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, if everything cooperates, I have a children's time prepared for you for today. Our thoughts are turned so much to us being part of the world in these days of um, Earth Day and also of the pandemic, which is around all around the world. And uh, this is a common thing in our home. They're pixie sticks. Leanne has a real real pixie stick tooth and um, I thought about the pixie sticks and how they are all colors and they could symbolize the different nations of the world or um, how people are all alike and yet different and I thought a way about ways that we're held together and uh, I tried to think of a way to make the pixie sticks stay together but they're not very cooperative and I looked for some string, but the only string I could find was this string that's like really too short to tie all the way around here. And so what I did was I took three pieces of string. And when I tied the three pieces together, it was long enough, long enough to go all the way around this group of pixie sticks and to hold them together and to support them. What one could not do alone, the three joining together were able to do together. And that's really um, the message for today, that by ourselves we might be not enough, but when we join together, we can do big things and we can help others in our world. The scripture this morning is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 14. And there's just two verses that we are for focusing on, and it's chapter 14, verses 27 and 28. This is when Jesus is uh, talking to the disciples and it's just before, well, it's during the Last Supper, actually. And he is trying to explain to them what is going to be happening. And so this is him predicting Peter's denial. And Jesus said, you will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee, the word of the Lord. Thanks Peace be to God. Be I don't. Re 
remember a lot about my childhood and my time at my grandparents' farm near Rodman. But a few things stand out. One is the parlor, the fancy room in the house. I think that in the past, it might have been where they welcomed special guests, or perhaps before funeral homes, it was where family members were laid out in their finest for viewing. All the best furniture of the house was in the parlor, and the fancy carpets and the pump organ, which only made a noise when an inquisitive grandchild snuck in long enough and pushed the foot pedals up and down while punching a few keys at the same time. Most of the time, the room was closed up and we couldn't go in there at all. The shades were pulled and the outside entrance was locked. The other mysterious spot in the house was the walk-in attic. At the top of the steep steps, you turn to the right and you open the door and you step into a world of potential or junk, depending on who was looking at it. I believe that the farm had been in a family a couple of generations at least. And my grandparents had lived there through the depression as well as many other hard times. I remember there being a wooden horsehair lounge. I believe that was what they called it. I'm not sure where the horsehair enters into it, but I think it may have been elegant in its day. But aside from the horsehair lounge, there were other, a lot of other pieces of furniture, very old furniture. And there were boxes filled with things and several large wooden trunks that contained, well, who knows what kind of treasures were in those trunks? Who knew the hidden potential of the contents of that attic? Not my grandma. There were literally tons of stuff in there, but I never really got to explore it. My grandma was a woman of few words, quite sharp of tongue, and as my mom once said, quite secretive. She also knew the value of a dollar, but she didn't know the value of the contents in the attic. We were there one day when my grandma, as if citing a coup, said, a man came by recently and gave me $60 for all that junk in the attic. That was it. Generations of family treasures gone gone who knows where. Only the crafty man who could see potential in that junk knew where he had taken it. I traveled through Lent this year with a devotion book called Calmly Plotting the Resurrection. It was written by Donna Shaper. She is also a United um, Church of Christ pastor. And in it, she mentioned a poet from New Hampshire named Donald Schaefer. In it, she mentioned that Donald had written similar stories about his grandparents' home in New England, where he spent a lot of time in his youth. It seems that his grandparents also saved everything up in their attic. In one of the many boxes there, he found one that had the contents listed on the outside. And what it said was, string, too short to be used. String, too short to be saved. The contents of that box so amazed him that after pondering the implications of what that could mean, he wrote a poem with that title, which later became a book. The poem states the obvious. His grandfather had saved the string that was too short to be saved. If you have ever felt like you were string too short to be saved, you know what it means to be risen. God has saved all of us in a great big attic. Nothing 
and no one is ever lost to God. Nothing and no one. Not a single love-starved child, not a single teenager who completes the act of suicide, not a single woman who dies of breast cancer, not Mary Magdalene, not Judas, not a single adult who preys on young children, not someone who was abandoned or cheated on their family in some way. No one is lost to God. We shall each appear as too short to be saved many, many times in our lives, and God will still save us. The state of being risen is the experience of string that knows it is too short to be saved, but is saved anyway, despite it all. After Jesus was raised, he raised us up. And as he promised, he went before us into our Galilee. Jesus said these words right after he had spelled out the coming events to the disciples. He had shared it at the last supper that they were going to share together before his death. He had just told them that he would be betrayed by them. He had just blessed and broken the bread and told them that his body would be broken in a similar way. They had just passed the common cup, which he told them was the reality of his blood being shed and poured out to save them all. He mentions that they will all turn away and that they will scatter like sheep without a shepherd. And then before all the denials begin, in the stunned silence of that room, Jesus interjects this amazingly hope-filled statement. Oh, by the way, after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee, AKA meet me in Galilee. Somehow no one hears this hope-filled spirit breathed statement of future fact. Yes, I know we're all going to go through hell on earth, but I'll meet you in Galilee when events turn around. We'll tie up those loose strings then. Jesus obviously saw the potential for good in everyone and in every situation. After the crucifixion, these disciples of his were broken by fear and grief. They were overcome by shame and regret for their betrayal and their failure to try and save Jesus. They were strings too short to be saved. Yet Jesus planned on saving them all. He was in effect saying, wait, we will rise out of this together. Reach out for each other, join hands and become one strong and powerful force and meet me in Galilee for the next chapter. We all die. We have all done way too much, or we haven't done as we should have done. We all die, but some of us rise to forgiveness before we go, and some of us don't. We remain string too short to be saved until God forgives us and then we forgive others. Then we connect. We become strong and useful and capable of holding stuff together. String separated is nothing. String connected has power to do good in this life and to rise into the next life. The process of risen is rarely complete. We are all still on our way. Easter Sunday has come and gone, and some of us have advanced all the way to our risen selves and all the way up to our capacity to give others forgiveness. 
some of us will choose not to. God help us to rise out of the current situation together. Each one of us, a string too short to be saved, but connected together, we are strong enough to do God's will and to be the church of Jesus Christ in this time, this time so filled with pain and grief. May we make every effort to join ourselves together to become the strength of Jesus Christ in this world today. May it be so. Amen. May we pray together. God of creation, we thank you for joining us in the beauty of this place. Surely you have done a good job here. We pray for the world around us. As we shelter in place around the planet, we notice that the world, like our own bodies, attempts to heal itself. Without the millions of vehicles racing around the globe, the smog is dissipated. We are seeing mountain ranges and cities that have been hidden from view because of our, de our desire to succeed at all costs. Help us to find a happy medium between progress and protecting our environment and planet. During this time when we are set aside, may our hearts and minds continue to be turned to you Come, Holy Spirit, come into our hearts today. We pray for all the sick and the grieving around the world who are suffering because of this disease. We pray for health and peace, celebration of life, and honoring those who are working so hard on our behalf. We pray for wisdom and discernment as to how and when to move forward. We pray for a successful treatment for coronavirus and the discovery of a drug to prevent its spread. As a nation, we are dependent on each other. We are all different from each other, but no one is of more value than their neighbor. We come through this together or we will not come through it successfully at all. We know we are all strings too short to be saved but we pray that together you may use us to help to heal the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you please join me in a final blessing? Go without fear into life's difficult places, for the earth is God's, and you are God's own. We have been blessed, reassured, and prepared. Our hearts have been cleansed, and our faith renewed. We know God is with us wherever we go. God's strength and might sustain us always. Be alert for the sign that salvation nears. Choose the good and receive its blessing. We lift up our hearts in faith and obedience for we bear the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. May God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday.